Hey everyone, and welcome back to Miss Azrael's Gaming. So we're going to get back into Killer Frequency today. So let's just go ahead and continue. Okay, so where we left off was we were looking for the Starling security system to um, help Dawn, who has been locked out of her home or her apartment. Here's Order it. delivery form. Starling must have left this by accident. <clears throat> this system's not even installed at Woodside. Unable to install, require new parts, new installation. Huh. So that's not even installed at her apartment. I'm starting to think she might be the whispering man. Uh, yeah. Because it's at St. Uh, Gabriel's Hospital. It's at the re Gas and Repair. The Roller Rink. And it's not installed at our radio station because client opted for manual. Uh, the Woodside's apartment unable to install requires new parts. New installation date is September 17th. Hmm. Yeah, so, um... It's not even installed. Starling 4000, user manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Okay, um, so let's see. So when entering codes, well, why would she need this if it's not installed? Hmm, I don't know. Why is it even there, the delivery note? Why would we know about that? That's odd. Anyway, when entering codes and commands, uh... Sequential key dis, uh, depressions must be made within four to five seconds of one another. If four to five seconds elapse without a key depression, the entry will be aborted and must be repeated from its beginning. Be sure to absorb this precaution when performing any of the procedures in this manual. If you make a mistake while entering a security code, stop, press the star key, then move over. Or then start over. Uh, if you move in the middle, or if you stop, oh my goodness, I cannot read today. If you stop in the middle while entering a code and then immediately start the entry over, an erroneous code might be entered. Okay, so our state-of-the-art security system uses a six-digit code system. Simply enter the code into the keypad and fill and feel total peace of mind. The Starling uh, Security Alarm System 4000 comes with a range of features. The default codes for these features are listed below. Please change these codes immediately to prevent unwanted entry. So, maintenance code call is 311212. Alarm test, warning this will set off the security measures is 191519. Alarm test deactivation code is 811220. And entry code is 715914. She needs to enter. I'm gonna take this too. Can I take this too? I gotta flip that. There we go. Hmm. Okay, so we're gonna trek back through the scary tunnel again. I wonder if I can. Can I tell her from here? Nah, she won't do it. Peggy doesn't do anything. I have to do everything. Go in the creepy basement. Go in the creepy alleyway. Go in the creepy back hall. All right, Peggy, I come bearing gifts. Oh no, the music's on. It resets itself, I guess. Okay, so I don't need the delivery notice, but I wanted to bring it just in case. So we're gonna set that there, and we're gonna call Peggy. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starling 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller Ricky! I... Do you think we should give him a call? Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but... Um... Why, why, why would we call Roller Ricky? Maybe we should just to be safe. I don't know. Let's call him. That might be a good idea. We'll just call okay, him. Okay, one moment. 
I got the number here. Patching you through. Shit. He probably can't hear it over the music. Forrest, I don't know about this. This is super weird. Just put me through to Don. I'll take care of this one way or another. Okay, if you say so. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Stream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? Which code should I give Don? Give entry code, give alarm test code, give maintenance code, or give deactivation code? Um... Probably the... Okay, so... Her apartment doesn't have one. And I'm really starting to think Don is the, uh, the whistling man. And I've been thinking that since I went to go get that album and we saw the whistling man in the alleyway. Because how would she know that the, that the CD, or the, um, CD, uh, the record had been thrown outside? Because we were not on air when, uh, Peggy said that. I'm going to give her the alarm and I'm going to set it off. And I think that should get her to run. So. Yeah. The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. I also don't like how she said that. Is she? Yeah, stay out! Nobody disrespects the sanctity of the ring! Don't ever come back here again! <sighs> oh, I'm him. calling the cops! Well, Thank God! Uh, I technically am the cops. Hello? Is someone there? Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. That was the whistling man. The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. I don't like hurting folk, but I can't let anything happen to Max. He's my best friend, you know? I... Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. I'm gonna barricade that window. My man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free whenever you want, forever. That's a done deal. I... Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. You got it. Talk to you soon. Okay, Gallows Creek. Here's some okay. music. While Achievement for alarming development. Just happened. Yay, I get to play this one that we found. So, and I got the whistling for playing man all. is a woman? I know I can't believe it. I had my suspicions. Yeah, it worked out a while. It, I worked it out a while ago. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. Yeah, I worked it out a while ago. Yeah, sure, Forrest. I you just did. never mentioned it. How dare you? She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. Yeah, she seemed pretty normal. I knew she wasn't right. I thought she was just regular Gallows Creek strange. <laughs> I'm gonna go with this one. I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? How Why dare do you? Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside to mess with us, maybe she actually wanted it. I mean, that's possible. It was either that one or it was actually to get me outside. I'm gonna go with this one though. I mean, maybe she actually wanted it. Could be her favorite killing song. Ugh, that's awful. So, what now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music, and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... 
Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman, one who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. We're neighbors, look out for each other and stay safe. I had to say it, but it's time to trust no one. Uh, no, we need to look out for strange things, I would say. The trusting no one never works because then somebody's going to get hurt. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. Do not trust anyone called Dawn. It could be a fake name. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. <laughs> Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. You're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. She's gonna kill me. Hey, man. Murphy? Damn yeah, straight. What's going on, Murphy? You in danger again? No, nah, man. I've just been listening to the show here at home. Since you asked folks to call in if they could help out, well, I'm calling. I don't know if I can say as much as other folks have, but uh, I figure I wouldn't be a good role model to Fernando if I didn't try to help, you know? You're a good father. Appreciate it. What have you got? You're a good father, Murphy. Absolutely. Fernando's a lucky kid. Oh, thanks. So, uh, what do you want to know? Well, what can you tell us? I say you called me. Uh, I don't know, really. <laughs> All right. Well, do you know anything about the death of George Barrow? Absolutely nothing. Okay. What about the killer herself? Herself? <laughs> Man, I, I didn't get my ass kicked by a lady. The man I went toe-to-toe with was a man, man. You heard the last call, right, Murphy? Yep. So you know it's a woman, and you were trained by a VHS, Murphy. I, I know, but... Man, how could it have been a woman under that mask? Let's just move on. Do you know anything about the history of the Whistling Man? No, sir. That's the first time I ever heard of Then why did he call what? us? I moved here three years ago, man. What do you want from me? Nothing. <laughs> no worries. Waste of time. <sighs> I just say no worries. Hey man, no worries. Just thank you for trying. Right. Sorry I couldn't help you all more, man. Now, you to ask me about game. Please hang up on Forrest, him. Forrest, we have a call coming in. Sorry, Murphy. I think that's all we've got time for right now. Uh, all right, all right. I'll catch you all with the gator talk later. No, thank you. Not. Well, folks, that was a bust. But perhaps our next caller has more they can tell us. Let's find out. It's gonna be Dawn and she's going to kill me. This is Forrest Nash and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey oh, okay. Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Okay, what happened? Breathe. Is he still breathing? Is he still breathing? He, yeah, but, but he's bleeding out. Oh, the ambulance has really been help, destroyed. Please. Take a breath. The only one they We've have in town. Forest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person. And they just stabbed him. Was it the whistling man? Was it a woman? Well, I mean, she's not going to know. She had a mask on. Casey, it was, far was away. his attacker the whistling man? The who? They had a mask and wore all black? That's all I know. Please, we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left! They left him to bleed out! I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, it's not so funny. 
funny now, is it? Before they left, but... Please! He needs to get to the hospital! I can't drive, so we need an ambulance! It's gone, sorry. Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. What's your friend's name? Where is he hurt? What? Shouldn't I be asking where are you so we can get somebody to drive to help them? Okay, let's, um, probably, where is he hurt? Can you tell us where your friend was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach. Ooh. And then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground, and it's... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg. Oh, don't What's pull What's your it out. friend's name, Casey? It's Jason. Jason Parker. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. Really, dude? Do you have time for that? <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. I know, but please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? I don't have much choice, we can handle it. Hit me. <clears throat> I'm sure we can handle it. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected mm -hmm. areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Okay. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take, take it, out. it out. I already knew that. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. Because you're dumb, Peggy. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far. I have to do everything. To go. Uh, are you sure you can't stay? I can't keep up. Keep going. Okay, so I think I've got it so far. He's already lying down. Apply pressure. Once the bleeding starts to slow down, put a clean cloth or something over it. Don't pull out the knife. I'm pretty sure I can remember this. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, Elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep mm -hmm. him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. Well, we also have to have somebody drive there to help them. Hello? Hello? Forrest, are you there? Okay, how are you holding up? How's Jason? We're on our own, so... I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly! He's still bleeding! I need help! I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell! Should I pull no. it out? No, 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 no. That's always the worst thing to do. Don't touch the knife. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. Please. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I 
Okay, we need to secure the knife. Leave the knife alone. Need to secure the knife. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry <coughs> piled up on top of the dryer. Some cloths on the hood of the car. And what else? Uh, I guess I've got my jacket. Use the laundry, use the cleaning rags, or use your jacket. Oh, I don't know. Um, well, she needs to tie it. And we don't know if these are clean, though. I mean, they're on the they're on a car. Oh wow, I don't know. Use the laundry. <laughs> Look in the laundry for something like a towel or a shirt. Hold that over the wound. Okay. Looks like I'm gonna have to buy you some new whites, Jason. Here we go. I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. Oh, I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Now? Okay. Now isn't the best time, Peggy. Can it wait? Forrest, it's kind of important. All right. Give me a second. Casey, I'm going to have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <coughs> You're right. <coughs> She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. She'll have to drive him. Any suggestions? Can somebody nearby help? Well, she said she can't drive. So let's see if there's somebody, somebody nearby. somebody nearby help them? Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? <laughs> I, never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course Way to go, us? Peggy. Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah, why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about <coughs> 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. <coughs> I've only ever called Karen. They're like a everybody's directory? personnel info is probably in <coughs> Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. I don't see a Casey... Casey Street. Okay, go on naturally. <sighs> I'm gonna do the side. It's sensitive information. So Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. Great, that sounds like ominous. Sound. Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? Like a floppy about? disk? I'm talking about floppy disks. Oh, no. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. You put them in a computer, and they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office. This is going to take forever. He's going to be dead keep by then. That. I'll just slide it under <clears> my door <throat> now. Thanks, Peggy. I just have to look around. I don't have to put music on? Yeah, we'll just go ahead and start that one. Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Okay. 
Okay, and it's not here, is it? That's not opening. Mm. Break room for Reggie's office is over here. Probably the one with the big boss man look. Oh gosh, he has a I want to believe poster. Reminds me of X Files. Okay, this certified uh, certificate is certified for Reginald Scott. His successful complete, he successfully completed the standard course in first aid to the injured, St. Gabriel's Hospital, Gallows Creek. Okay, well, we know he can do it, but we don't know if he lives there. Okay, so let's check this out. I'm not seeing anything there. Looks like There's I a need safe. a four-digit code. Okay, it says hint. Very important date. Okay. So either it's an anniversary or a birthday would be my guess. Just drop that there. Okay, acts forever. Need to write pitch document. Good title. Bring original proto tag and villain. Is he a, wanting to be a a writer? Oh, I can't do that one, but I can do that one. I wonder if that'll be an achievement. I've been trying to poke all those. Okay, anything in the trash? I think I'm on top of the desk. That's hilarious. Don't see anything there? another ask genie where those tapes are it's been weeks now overdue uh, chupacabras Clive if you're reading this stop stealing my post-it notes <laughs> he didn't have that many as many post-it notes as I thought was gonna be in here okay we've got the floppy disk don't see any more post-it notes to read. I read that one. I think this is just a video. Alien sightings. Number 75 UFOs over a park. Okay. Let's put that in there. Loading. Could pizza delivery killer it. kills with a pizza cutter. Okay, deep cuts, um, top secret, pizza delivery killer kills with a pizza cutter, free slice on me, terrifying, there's nothing, any pizza, or there's never any pizza, what happened to the original delivery guy, maybe write him in as a final girl's boyfriend, protagonist is college student Megan, surname follow, she's smart, beautiful, resourceful, and lactose intolerant, and flies the divide between her and the pizza killer, <laughs> takes place on 1107, very important date for the town. Aha, uh -huh, 1107, that could be it. A great goose gathering event where a large number of geese appeared suddenly and saved the town from starvation. Try to link this into the greater story. Need to kill off Megan's support network throughout the movie. Maybe Acts 3, but never, but even scarier. Uh, maybe partner with Ponty Pizza for the launch. 110 orders just received a pizza cutter and tickets to the movie. Okay, we're going to remember 117. Is there a way to, like, is there more to that? No. Okay, so let's try 11-7. Nice. Ha ha ha, I am a genius. Oh my good lord. Oh, that's me. And Peggy. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read everybody's personnel files. 
Can I pop this out? Oh no, I can't. Um, sit that right here. Drop that one. Get a load of this, Peggy. Apparently, I'm a lone wolf type. Oh, that was his. We don't have time for this. We have a man literally dying on the line, and you're more interested in you. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I can read the rest of this later. I'm going to read it now because there's no time limits. I'm going to laugh if there is a time limit in this one. So, Forrest Nash, show host, April 5th, 1940. Come on in, uh, Romero Street, uh, four, uh, 5420237. So I can't believe we actually got the Forrest Nash here in Gallows Creek. His motivation may be low, his demands are a bit beyond our means, and he's currently blacklisted from any reputable station, but honestly, we don't have a reputation to lose. Forrest isn't really interrogate, um, integrating with the team, seems to have this lone wolf thing going on. Heard him call Jeannie, Janie. Janie and Brenda in his first week. Hopefully this changes when he gets settled. I've paired Forrest with Peggy for his show. They seem to have developed a relationship of sorts pretty quickly, which is good because we sure don't have the show budget to pair him with Karen. Okay. And drop. Let's look at Peggy's. Hey, Peggy. I think Reggie's on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for a while. What? Why are you reading my file? You need to find someone who can help Casey. We already know I can. Don't waste time. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. <laughs> I really shouldn't have read both. We're in a hurry. <laughs> Peggy Weaver, producer, May 23rd, 1959, apartment uh, 17A, Wayland Road, 5428723. So, I've never seen somebody gel with everybody as quickly as Peggy has. Her, Karen, and Barbara have really become a little family already. Maybe we need to run this station on girl power. Hopefully it's cheaper than electric. But sometimes I wonder if Peggy secretly wants her own show. She hasn't been shy about getting involved in the calls on the screen. Sometimes it feels as though Forrest could just leave for a coffee mid-call and nobody would know. That's kind of rude. Uh, Peggy and Karen have missed another work event, this time first aid training. Because of their training sessions, their collection of cocktail parasols grows after each session. Why are they doing training sessions at a bar? Ooh, somebody's in trouble. And we'll just leave that there, because who cares about the mess? Oh. Okay. Good. Okay, Karen's. Hello? What? What the frick was that? You know, sometimes I think things happen in this game that really aren't supposed to. Huh, there's a hole. I don't see anything in them. Weird. Okay. Okay, so Karen Lawson, senior producer, August 2nd, 1944, 22 Nancy Drive, 5421408. Karen has really stepped up her duties in recent months. She has fully taken on um, Hamish's show alongside the Timberland twins ever since uh, ever since Wes left. Hopefully she doesn't get any ideas about being paid double. Karen has started monitoring or mentoring Peggy. I think this will be really good. For Peggy, they are even doing team building training getaways to improve efficiency. Update. I'm starting to suspect that these producer training getaways are being strategically timed. They've now both missed a Secret Santa, First Aid Training, and the Teddy Gallo Junior Station visit. Okay, John Hedges, Newsreader, July 19th, 1931, 14 Nancy Drive, 542 or 0735. So John refused to engage with the first aid trainer during the course. I know he was a war medic, but it was station policy to send everybody regardless. John apparently has a bunch of medical equipment in his home that he procured from the military at the end of his service. Is that legal? Do I need to report him? Spoke to John again and about eating the free samples that Brad gets sent for his reviews. He said he'd stop, but he said that the last three times, too. Is it un-American to reprimand a war vet? <laughs> well, he's not doing what he's 
supposed to do. Okay. So we have Barbara and Bradley. Let's start with Bradley. Okay, Bradley Carter. Food critic, January 14th, 1962. 31 Axe Down Lane, 542-4298. So when I hired Brad as our station's food critic, people said I was crazy. We only have three takeout places and a diner. What's the point? To them, I say, you can't be afraid to explore the darkest reaches of the unknown. Or Henderson. Bradley and Barbara seemed to be spending an awful lot of time together. I didn't realize she was so interested in Brad's work. Maybe I should join one of their after-work meetings sometimes. I always wanted to learn more about food. I'm sure that's what they're doing. Brad and Barbara ended up missing a lot of our first aid training. Brad made a joke about practicing mouth-to-mouth, -mouth and Barbara got really upset and stormed off. The joke wasn't that bad. Because maybe it was with the nurse. Barbara Albright, receptionist, October 7th, 1957, 14 Craven Street, 5421890. Barbara's really getting on well with all the staff here. Everybody gave her great feedback at our last review. I get the feeling there's something going on with her and Brad, call it a hunch. Barbara got another cat recently. She must have at least five now. Daisy Murphy, Penelope Freddy, and Lord Winston. I'll need to monitor product productivity going forward. The cat photos are a big distraction for the rest of them, for the rest of the team. Barbara laughed when I told her about the concept for a new horror script. I don't care what she thinks. A story about an alien egg at the center of the Earth set to hatch on February 30th is a great idea. Why else would we avoid having February 30th? <laughs> so really, the only person that would work is John. Let me see his one more time. Yeah, because he's on Nancy Drive, which I believe is what she said. And he was a medic in the military. So, it has to be him. I wonder if I need to call her. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I think I know who to call. I got the safe open now once, I think. I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please, head Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to give him the rest, but he just threw up everywhere. He's going into shock. What's happening? What do I do? Did he booze earlier? He's going into shock. Peggy, what does the nurse say? God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate Jason's legs. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Additional bandages replace the bandages. You don't want to replace the bandages. She said to leave them there. So we'd want to do don't more. Don't remove the bandage. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I've used the rest of the laundry to keep them warm, so I'll use my jacket. I can always get a new one. I'll fix his bandage and get him warm. Hold on, please. Oh. Good thing we didn't use her jacket on his leg. going to be fine. Be strong for Jason. It's not looking good. Casey, I need you to be strong for Jason. 
Sit with him and reassure him that everything's gonna be okay. Okay? Okay. All right, Forrest, we need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. You said you knew who to call earlier? Who was it? Okay, it was John, right? Yep. We need to call John. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. And What's everybody else didn't pay attention. Uh, five four two zero seven three five. Calling now. Let's hope he picks. Uh, who the hell is this calling me? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency, and we need your help. Forrest. Work emergency, then I can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. This is a medical emergency. Somebody has been stabbed. The whistling man is back. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man. Or, never mind. He's lost a lot of blood and he's passed out. We need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is gonna die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I. I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak and then just started thrashing. How is he now? Are you hurt? What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. that the show moves on we're sending our best wishes to Jason well after all that excitement I think we could use some music uh, come back upstairs when you're ready okay this this is really weird to me is the fact that everybody can talk on the phone and be places where there aren't Phones, like I think they had cordless phones back in 1987. I don't, I don't really remember. Um, but they didn't have cell phones. I know that there were. I'm pretty sure that you could get a satellite phone, but the odds of everybody in this small town having a satellite phone are pretty slim. So, like, how are people talking in a hedge maze on a phone? You know, talking from a garage on a phone. I I don't know. I'm just I'm kind of confused. I don't know how. I get there were pay phones back then, but I doubt there was a pay phone like in the middle of the hedge maze. So, just just a little, a little odd about that. Great. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Oh, sounds Give like me a buzz when you want to go back on air. I'm just got the music still playing. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through, too. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. 
I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Forrest, it's me, Roller Ricky. Oh, and Maxie's here too. Good to hear from you. What's on your mind? Are you okay? Let's ask if he's okay. Are you okay? Not under attack again, are you? Oh, we're good, man. Thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. That wouldn't be a bad look for you, Forrest. A little white wing halo number. Maybe something for the KFAM Halloween party. <laughs> All right, everyone. Let's calm down. Ricky, I'm just glad we could help you and Maxie. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Really? Info from the attack? I'm waiting. Oh? What's that? You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. Alright, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team too. Tell me about him. Keep talking. What? Keep talking? What happened? We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? Tell me about her. What was her name? Dawn. George's girl? Ricky, who was the girl? She she might just be the one behind all of this. What? No way, man. <clears throat> there was so much love there. I can't believe she Which is why she would do that. Like this. Ricky, please. What was her name? I never got her name, man. He just called her Bean. I didn't really know her before, or see her after that. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were... just having a good time, and then... the next thing I knew... everyone was running for their life. I looked up... and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. And I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? <clears throat> that the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but... Uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. And... It wasn't your fault. That's horrible. Maybe if you hadn't run. Ricky, it wasn't your fault. You're not a bad person. I know that now, ma'am. Took a long time to learn, but... Yeah. Just thought I'd tell you all what I know. I'll explain Thank why you, he had Ricky. the uh, drug this problem. Helps. Thank you. You got it, ma'am. <laughs> anyway, I think it's time for me and Maxie to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening. Man, I wish I could have I'll saved Virginia. Ah! Night, Ricky. Would have liked to have talked to her. All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. <laughs> if she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late 30s now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in. But hang on. What's up, Peggy? Uh, that's not good. Peggy? It's probably Dawn. You're gonna want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. It's probably Dawn All and right, she's outside. Folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back I don't after really this. have any of those. Played everything. Let's just do... Um, no, I don't... I always accidentally grab that one. Do final breath. I'll help you relax. There you go. I know him. You love him. This is Roddy Snatcher with his new single, 
final breath. Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Maybe it's that, um, the 911 operator. Hello? Forrest, I'm glad I got back through to you. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy You're just to have now you going too. home? I... Wait, Sarah? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. <laughs> anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago. We've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through until now. Oh, okay. It's been a long night, so help is on its way. It's been non-stop since you left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. I'm leading a whole goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek as we speak. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines. They had no idea what was happening. That's great news. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man hmm. cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he... How she... How the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot. But we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town. But if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. Haven't we helped enough? What do you need? Gallows Creek is too big. You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in. So once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. I don't know. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Boris Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. Let's get back on the air. I hope you're right. I don't think it's going to be that easy. That's nice to think, Peggy, but I don't reckon Dawn is going to give up without a fight. She probably won't give up without a fight, no. But neither will we. Now, let's get you back into the arena, champ. Time to turn the music off. Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say, things are looking up. It's almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John! Is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. Oh, good. We've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. If you hadn't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? The one and only Jason. You feeling okay? So I got Jason lives <laughs> for my achievement. It is. I hope you're feeling better now. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh, before that, I... I needed to call you. I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there? Yep. Why do you ask about that? Yes, the whistling man's still out there. Why do you ask? You know something about the whistling man, don't her. you? Yeah. 
I do. Can we talk about what happened earlier? <clears throat> Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean, he was attacked earlier. I think she's killing everybody that was there out. that night. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail. He was probably the one dressed time. up. It was hell. And then the town just moved on. Like he never existed. Okay, so what happened? Who killed George? Did you kill him? Let's ask what happened. What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. We decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. At the party that night, I left the group for a second. Met our whistling man. Pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone. Started an almighty panic. Those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean. Yes, George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was... What? What happened? Are we still on air? No, no, we're not. How do we get it back on? Ricky picked it up a while ago in case he ever needed to do an emergency broadcast. An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attack, broadcasting a serial killer's location to the top. I am not going in the basement. Fair point! It's in the storage area in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. Oh, See you when you're back. Uh, no, it's your turn to do something, Peggy. I am no. Nope, 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 nope. <sighs> this is awful. This is a stupid idea. So stupid. The power was cut for a reason. And somebody is going to be down there because they got through the door that I left open because I couldn't turn it off. Oh, I hate this. I hate this. That's locked, I know. Those are all locked but his office. Is this station so big? 
Something's going to happen. That must be it. You ain't getting me. <sighs> oh, we've got power. I don't want to turn around. Okay, let there be light. Was my achievement? The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Dude, the whistling man is after you, man. Dude, I haven't heard something. Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy! I need to get back upstairs. I heard somebody open the door and walk in. I am horrified right now. Okay, I just keep... Just keep going. Just keep what going. the hell? The hell was that? Keep, just keep going. I can't run. Okay, it wasn't there. Oh my god, Peggy. Oh no. Peggy! Where'd you go? <gasps> oh no! What the? This can't be happening. See, she's not after me. A, a call. Just wanna, wanna check things real quick. Maybe they'll go away. Did Dawn press the Peggy button? Did she want me to hit it on my end? I don't, I, I don't want to. No, thank you. I'm good. Are you, you want some coffee? I, I can make you some coffee. Ah, fine. Where's Peggy? What do you want? Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. We've got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. What do you mean, I'd rather not, all right? What do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well... Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Well, let me take that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you oh, the years ago. Oh, the candidate but even if for you mayor. Out of his coffin with all the money in the world. Why'd she move Wait, that? Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I knew it. There was more I'm than one. Here with Teddy. <gasps> Maybe it is Peggy. Where that is. Well, he knows he'll get it. But you're here, then who's here? Wait. It's Peggy. Who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy. Oh. Henry Barrow. Her son. This is a lot, hi, Henry. <laughs> Your son? You mean you. Her and George. Wait, that, that he. Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. So there were two whistling men tonight. Of course. 
That explains how you were always able mm -hmm. to get around town. I knew it so had to be more than one. And that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper office. Don't think I've forgotten about that, Forrest. Locking my sweet boy away like an animal. Eh, he's and fine. Murphy, he, he was right, wasn't he? He did fight a man. He did. I taught my boy to never run away from a fight. Hang on. Did you say Barrel? That are you? Let me just get this mask off. I kind of wondered if Teddy had something to do with him. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Money went crazy wearing this. Because it would make sense how it all just went away. <sighs> there we go. Marie? Marie Campbell? George is old girl. Oh. Well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Not Don, huh? Quiet, Teddy. <laughs> Where's this going? I'd be quiet if I were you, Teddy. But I... I'd listen to Forrest. Everyone's gonna know now <clears throat> what Teddy did. He killed George that night. He was the whistling this man. This night. Twenty years ago. Listen to me. You... Ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not <clears throat> a moment before. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. I'll do it. Why should I? I won't do it. I'll say I'll do it. Okay. I'll cooperate. Right. I'll do it. Because <clears throat> I don't know okay. where Peggy is. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Murdered? Uh, listen, I... I said you speak when you're spoken to. <sighs> Now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. I can do that if you say so. Are you serious? Interview you? All right. I can do that. Thank you. I want you to help me and Teddy tell the story, Forrest. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. <laughs> Uh, hopefully this drag me this not listen to Virginia. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek. And if I can find out where Marie is. I hope I'm not saying that out loud. Can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just uh talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was twenty years ago. Hidden Marie, be honest, Teddy, do you want to die? Do you want to die, Teddy? Because if you don't, start talking. <coughs> what the hell? God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. Whistling night right. The night Mooney vanished. Tell me that why that night. I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as Whistling Night. I'm guessing that's what you mean? Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just a night that Mooney went missing. But Whistling Night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God was there. Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know, because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. So, I helped him keep himself together. You, you were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About 
Midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there, bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man, <laughs> screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. No, Ricky didn't know. Did you ask Ricky? And so he deserves to die. No, Marie, you're wrong. Ricky didn't know. What? Did you miss that part of the broadcast? I spoke to him earlier. He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... It doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. Just a prank? Go to hell. Hit him, Murray. Uh... How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on! I... God damn it! You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. Well, shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point. And when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the whistling man grabs me. I scream, and he starts laughing, telling me it's, it's just a joke. I could stall for time here. Okay, who was it? What happened next? How did you feel? Oh, um, I don't want to go with what happened next because that should just go on. Maybe how did you feel? Or who was it? I don't know. Um, let's go with this one. Who was it, Marie? Who was the whistling man? I suddenly recognized it was Chuck. Chuck Brody was the whistling man, laughing away. But then he stops, and he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy, what happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just... Teddy? George fell off whistling point where were you how do you know why do you fall uh why'd he fall teddy he just you pushed him you were up there you were dressed as the whistling man too and i didn't push him god damn it i just chased him up there and he kept backing up when I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what Why you didn't saw. he take the mask you off? Liar! It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains, God, he this guy's an idiot. Realized, <laughs> you bitch! <clears throat> no one's going to believe this. After all you did. I believe her. Then why the cover-up? Even if you didn't push him? Mm. I believe her. You... What? <sighs> Hopefully that wasn't the wrong answer. Why else cover it up? My future was at stake, Nash. You know what it's like. 
People like us are bragged for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, Forrest. And then governor. And then, who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip ruin Oh my god, somebody's future. life's not just a blip. George was a blip? He wasn't a blip. That's evil. He wasn't a blip, Marie. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night, but... Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. Answer the question, is that a yes? Hit him again. <laughs> I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes! Okay, we own most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... I saw. I'm... I'm sorry. If Dr. Sullivan had survived, then maybe... There's no excuse for what she did, Forrest. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper. But no. That coward killed the story. <sighs> We'll take care of Maurice Russell later. Okay, you've been through hell. This has to stop. When will the killing end? You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. It never should have started. He shouldn't have pushed my George off a cliff. He should have been punished. But it's coming to a stop. At least for now. Here, where George and I first met, before he joined your football team, was right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. Marie's holding Teddy at this hostage, the school gym, the football field, or the roller rink. Ugh, why are you... Why? Why are you all up on me, man? Shot the winning shot before he joined the football team. The school gym? Maybe like she means like basketball? You're at Gallows Creek High in the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. Not that it matters, but yes, we're here. Anyway. I think that about wraps it up. I took a swing for Teddy Gallows. Teddy. I got the achievement. So. Marie? Where? Peggy? Oh my god. Peggy! Teddy? You've got to help me. I. Quiet. You'll talk more later. Now I have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy. It's been so long. Are they like since friends I've or seen something? Face. I worried you wouldn't come. Marie! Why is this guy oh my God. all looking at me? You. And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Oh. Sister, what the hell? Sister? Peggy, wh what's happening? Why are you even there? Want to explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out. That 
My sister is the whistling man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry, you should have said. I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they'd learned I'd been with George. And... And... Uh, Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's Mom and Dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well... I'll have to settle for the next best thing. Next best thing? You mean Peggy, don't... Is that why you attacked Eugene? Is she gonna kill Peggy? Peggy didn't have anything to do with this. Who's Eugene? I don't remember Eugene. You mean Peggy, don't you, Murray? Someone has to pay for what they did. Murray, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. Marie, Peggy never forgot about you! Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She, she kept it here, on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth Oh, that's the one I just looked at. What does it say, then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I... Well, I... Henderson Police! Freeze! No! Henry! Get out of there! Peggy! We have two wounded and we're in pursuit of the suspect. Henderson Police! Freeze! Forrest! <gasps> Leslie! How's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. God, Marie. Hey, Zara. I Tale need of you two sisters, Peggy. she meant. She needs help. Now, we got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. Sure about it's them? over, Forrest. <sighs> well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This is Ben. Forrest Nash. <laughs> See how should I sign off the show? Good night and good morning. Let's make tomorrow better. It's been a scream. <laughs> and it's been a scream. Okay, the man, the myth, the scream. It's my achievement. Ooh, I hope that is the end. So yeah, we saved everybody but Virginia. Okay, open the door to skip the epilogue. And credits. Oh, well, I don't want to skip the epilogue, but I'm afraid that that... No, so, turn off the music, please. I'll stand over here. I bet they don't get them. Oh. She's gonna jump. Stop! Put your hands in the air! Get down on the ground! Don't move! Nobody else has to get hurt! Don't stop! Suspect has jumped! Into the water. I heard water splash. And there we have it, everybody. That is the end of the game. 
Uh, so we found out that Marie was actually going around and taking out everybody who had pulled the prank on their group of friends and George ended up dying from, uh, it sounded like at the end of that epilogue that she jumped and hit water. So that might not be the end of Marie and she could come back and go after the people that we saved. We ended up losing Virginia, unfortunately. Uh, maybe I'll try to go back. Uh, later on and uh, play through again and maybe cut out most of the stuff that we've already done and just have like the end stuff where we save the actual individual and then show what the ending ends up being uh, after that but let me know what you thought of the game down in the comments it's definitely a fun fun game I highly recommend it um, like I said it's on sale right now on the Xbox I also saw on Steam it's on sale there for the same price of $19.99 so if you you know really enjoyed it and want to try out the game yourself you know there, there's your opportunity to do it because it's on sale so I hope um, that you enjoyed like I said please leave me a like subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you next time bye